Can a guy who is five foot nine, 175 pounds, make it in the pros? Yes, he can. But it's a matter of ability and not size. I feel I can play. I don't know for sure, and those questions will be answered in the future. The NFL was so scared of me. They, they didn't know what to think of me. Okay, here you won the Heisman. You've put up all these numbers. You beat big-time teams. You're too small to play. So publicly, when they get asked the question, oh, he's great, he's a phenomenal talent, he's this, he's that, he blah, 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 and they try to say all these positive things, and in the back of their mind, they're like, somebody else draft him. Flutie was traded by the Los Angeles Rams, who owned his NFL rights, to the Chicago Bears. When I went to Chicago, Jim McMahon was really banged up. Tom Zack and Steve Fuller were there, and Jim felt that those other guys deserved the opportunity first, not an outsider, and that created friction. A lot of guys got aggravated with me when I brought Doug to Chicago. I brought him here because he gave us a better chance to win. Flutie has to be activated by 3 o'clock tomorrow. Otherwise, he's available. But uh, you can count on Doug being activated. The other thing that Dan Hampton mentioned about Flutie, and there has been a lot of controversy as to their signing Flutie here. A lot of the team did not like it. He said, Flutie, this trophy is bigger than he is. Poor coach Ditka. Jim McMahon on the sidelines with a shoulder injury. Steve Fuller not having a spectacular night. Mike Tomczak showing some promise. And Doug Flutie signed up but not suited up tonight. Welcome back, where the Lions have just closed this one up to 10 to 7. An interest of the spectator right here now, the newest member of the Chicago Bears, Doug Flutie. Doug, how's it been going for you this week? Pretty good. I can't complain about it. Uh, things are coming a little slow, and it's it's tough getting adjusted to a new system and a uh, new uh, atmosphere around you. But I'm learning as quick as possible and trying to get accustomed to playing with the Bears. Doug, were you surprised at all the hoopla about when you came in this week? Could you believe the press that came out to the Bears? I really was yeah. surprised. You know, I'm just looking to get my foot in the door and, and get started, and all of a sudden they're making a big deal out of it. <laughs> it's just a matter of time until uh, I become a part of the team, and it's just going to take its time, and time will uh, heal all wounds. You know, that, that you know that, that you're starting to be accepted, and uh, I guess Walter Payton's the practical joker in yeah. the team. Oh, he'll he'll get you. He he already is attempted. He him. got you. Okay. I understand he threw a, a little football out of practice the other day. Somebody brought out a little Doug Flutie <laughs> ball, a little Pop Warner football, and some of the guys are having some fun with it. Well, Doug, I know that uh, we speak for the rest of people around CBS and National Football League. Welcome to the NFL, and thanks for visiting with us this afternoon. Thank you. He's the understudy, and Ditka is trying to keep the back-to-back -back Super Bowl dream alive. The turbulent Bears face the Falcons next Sunday on CBS Sports. Here's Doug Flutie, and of course, everyone remembers the memorable pass to Gerard Phelan for the victory for Boston College over Miami in a bittersweet week because the day that Flutie was activated, Gerard Phelan was released by the New England Patriots. What do you find uh, talking to most of the Bears about Flutie's arrival on the show? Well, it, it depends. If you talk to the offensive players, first of all, the offensive starters, they're very fond of Jim McMahon. He's their guy, and why not? He's the guy that took them where they wanted to go. That's winning the Super Bowl. But if you talk to some of the defensive ball players, all they're interested is one thing, production. They want points scored. They say nothing against Tomczak, nothing against Fuller. We just want a guy in there who can score some points for us. Yes, that is Doug Flutie warming up on the Chicago sideline. This band at all with the plays on board. He's real loose yesterday when we talked to him. You know, he's really gotten used to having the attention of, a, of being a hero. I well, when you win the Heisman Trophy, I think that it's dealing with the media is something that you learn to live with, it's something you learn to handle. And Mike Ditka, he had some interesting things to say to us yesterday. He said there'll be significant, maybe shocking changes next year on the play. Well, he said, even if we win it all this year, I've got to make changes. He's just not happy, I think, with the overall... Do we call it chemistry or whatever this club? He said, don't be surprised by anything we do. The crowd was chanting for him on the sidelines. And now Doug Flutie, who the Bears said this week had the strongest arm of all four quarterbacks, will run his first play in the National Football League. 
He said, you know, the longer I was out, the more doubts I was beginning to have about my ability to play. Well, almost on a daily basis, people are telling him that he's too short, that his arm isn't very strong, that he doesn't have the tools that all the other quarterbacks in the National Football League have. And he said, you know, after a while, you're not human if you don't question yourself. First and goal on the five. Rudy rolling out. And going out of bounds at the six. Loss of one, Jeff Davis. Chase Doug. Was this a rollout all the way? Hard to tell. Looked like it was a missed handoff. Looked like he was trying to hand the ball off to Neil Anderson. You can see the way that Anderson spun around and looked behind him. Rudy rolling out to the left. Looking, tossing, incomplete. Pass was intended for Emery Moorhead, and it'll be fourth down. So welcome to the NFL, Doug. He had all the time in the world as he floats out to the left. I don't know what happened to the Tampa rush. There's no one looking at him on the ground. Watch now, we'll see Moorhead come across the picture, moving right to left. Well, he's got him wide open and just overthrows him, let him way too far. Did he know he made a bad pass? You be the judge. <laughs> Wild pitch. <laughs> Flutie has thrown one pass in the NFL. Mike Ditka said, uh, as we talked to him yesterday afternoon, last night, that he would not hesitate to play Flutie. He would not play McMahon. There's Doug Flutie, the Heisman Trophy winner, as you know, he's looking on. He now is uh, kind of the number two quarterback with Steve Fuller, kind of the number three quarterback. Because nobody is really sure on the quarterback rotation of the Chicago Bears right now. And Mike Ditka has said we've got to get uh, uh, Flutie ready to play in future weeks. Doug Flutie will play today. Mike Ditka has made a point of it all week. He wants his Heisman Trophy winner to get some experience. He wants to clear up his quarterback situation before the playoffs. Flutie comes into the game off of that mistake down on the goal line. So Doug Flutie has a nice way to start the game here from the 23-yard line of Tampa Bay. Wow. <laughs> and Mike Ditka wasted no time. He sent in a play, and he told Doug Flutie, you run it. Had he been able to get by Jackie Walker, Walker does a good job there as he fakes the pass, forces him back in. And he almost got killed here. He dipped down underneath about four Buccaneers at the last second. Uh, he's getting some signals from the sidelines. Also, though, we'll probably shuttle players a little more often to bring plays in specifically. Just got planned to play Doug Flutie. Didn't say when or for how long. But he got him in in a hurry. First and goal. Flutie rolling. Touchdown. I think we're going to see the name Doug Flutie quite a bit for the rest of the year. For the Chicago Bears. You can see that Steve McMichael, 76, to the seal block. But watch 57, Tom Thayer. Uh, you'll see it as Flutie goes into the end zone. He uh, made the nice block right there at the goal line, and it was duck soup for Mr. Flutie. His first NFL touchdown. Well, there's Doug Flutie, who probably feels a lot better. He says he's been here all these weeks. He really hasn't had the chance to play, and you get to know your teammates a lot better. He says when you get in the game and become a part of the action. So, uh, that he's conquered. He's been a part of the action in the few minutes he's played. Mike Ditka is so high on Doug Flutie. He's the man who wanted him when uh, this situation earlier in the season. He says anybody who can throw for over 10,000 yards in college, he has, he's the all-time NCAA uh, thrower in history, he says, can play professional football. And Chicago with it at their own 20. Flutie from the shotgun. Going deep for Willie Goff. Two yard pass play, about 65 yards in the air for the little guy. If you have any wonder about his arm, the first down Chicago at the 27 yard line. A huge throw. This one went about 65 yards in the air. I asked him as long as he's ever thrown the ball. He says around 70 yards. Well, that time he just zinged it, and Willie Golf has that speed, brought him across the field and hit him right on the button. Well, that's his first completion in the NFL. and. Uh, not a bad one to Willie Gall. He's one of five today. 
one of six career for Chicago and the first completion a big one that gives Chicago another scoring opportunity with 29 seconds still to play in the first half in the backfield Peyton Moten Fletcher from the back side he gets it off intended for Peyton touchdown no flag What a catch and what a throw as the fans are on their feet at Soldier Field. Flutie running the opposite direction was boxed in the corner. Remember, he's a, a right-handed thrower and over on the left sideline just turned his body and flicked that ball. Okay, they rolled him left. And actually, Tampa Bay defense it pretty well. See Jeff Davis here putting the pressure. Now, that's a tough throw for a quarterback. And that ball, I think Peyton was surprised that it was so far down the field. Doug Flutie having passed for his first NFL career touchdown. Here's a look at his reaction to his good fortune here. He says, oh, he caught it. So let's watch Doug Flutie. He was the first one down to the goal line as he the takes Bears. off. And you talk about striking in a hurry. Two plays right down the field all the way. And Doug Flutie has made his mark. Chicago Bears with Doug Flutie getting into the action today for the first time in any significant fashion. Running for one, passing for another touchdown, and uh, going over to visit with, with Steve Young. Two great young college quarterbacks, and I'm sure uh, talking about the frustrations of having to run so much before you can get the ball off. And what should we call number two now, Terry? Well, he's played so well, I think we should call him Doug Flute. <laughs> okay, indeed, 28 to nothing. The Bears explode behind Doug Flutie, their new quarterback. His first touchdown, those of you watching in Chicago are enjoying this. He runs for it. Now, what about Doug? Is he too small, Terry, to play in the NFL? What do you think about it? Well, they say yes, but did you see the thing that Ditka's doing to him is getting him outside of the pocket, gets the pressure off, and gets him out there. Well, if he is too short, then he can at least see out there outstanding throw and catch by Peyton. And there's his current stats. That's what he has done so far this afternoon, and no one is enjoying it more than number two. And you got uh, another quarterback is into our quarterback picture. It's the uh, revolving quarterbacks. What do you think about that? I tell you what, it was exciting watching him play. It uh -huh. really was. He and Tom Zach did a great job all day. And you could feel that electricity in the stadium when he ran on the field. Oh, yeah, you? yeah. How about you? You must have been, you told me earlier this week, you said, I just want to get in and get it over with and, and not be waiting on the sidelines. It, it was a great feeling to get out there, and especially when the game's still in question, to, to try to help the team. Um, I just wanted to get in there, prove my worth to the team, mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'm a part of this team. I think maybe today was a good step in that direction. Were you surprised that the point that he put you in the game? A little bit. I anticipated coming in in probably the third quarter, mm -hmm. I, that, in my own mind. Um, I knew that that he was going to definitely put me in, so I prepared myself and just be ready when the time comes. I didn't know when it would come, and I don't, I'm not even sure if Coach Dicken knew exactly when he wanted to put me in. Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to take a look at some highlights of, of uh, some of the plays that you did. This is, I believe, your run for the, tu for the touchdown. Well, after a timeout, we, we finally got the right formation in there and got into the end zone on the run, a heck of a block out in front of me and gave me an opportunity to run it in. Yeah, it was Tom Thayer, number 57. You see him pulling out here. I don't think they'll see the block. But Thayer threw a heck of a he, block. He to, cut him right down in front of me and just made it an easy cakewalk to the corner. I was anticipating having to make a move or, or do something to get into the end zone, and it was a cakewalk. And here's the one you threw 65 yards in the air, and you were telling me just yesterday that you had thrown one 70 yards, I think, in college in the game, but you really zinged that one. I let it fly a little bit. Willie, before the play, I was telling him to, to really take a good look at this because mm -hmm. I was going to go for the post, or I, I was mm -hmm. going to take a peek at the post anyway, and the free safety came out of the middle of the field, and I just tried to lay it up for Willie, and... Uh, he came down underneath it. Yeah, when you see, when you see that free safety out of out of his position, you know you got something going. You know you have a chance for a big one. Okay, here's the rollout to the left. On the sprint out here, I wasn't sure whether I was going to get that one off or not. I, I had pressure coming from the backside, but Walter made a great move to get behind in one-on-one -on -one coverage. I think and, you got uh, a little excited. I was pretty pumped. <laughs> there was a heck of a grab by Walter, I tell you, and I needed that one for confidence. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, you've been practicing with the team, but... You're not really a part of the team until you get out and do something on the field it, in the game. Exactly, and uh, this was a big step in that direction, to get out in the, in the field of play and make some things happen out there. It's, 
it's different being out on the practice field. You can earn their respect as an athlete, but you got to be out and out in the game situation and do it. Did you sense the crowd when you went on the field? Could you? It felt good. It, it was encouraging. I heard the crowd, and uh, it's encouraging. And I tell you, when you're first coming back out onto the field, it's been a long time. Uh, you need that help. You need every little bit you can get. What kind of a relationship do you have with Mike Tomzak? I mean, uh, these kinds of things can cause friction sometimes. Uh, I have a very good working relationship with Mike. Mike and I you know, joke around a little bit, and, and you know, even after I was successful and threw the touchdown off on the sideline, Mike gave me a little wink of the eye, and, and you know, there's no friction between the two of us. Whatever happens, happens. Mike's the number one guy. I'm just trying to get myself in a position where I can help this team if mm -hmm. it calls for it. Were you glad that Mike Ditka sent him back in to start the second half? In a way, I was, mm -hmm. because if, if Mike had sat out the rest of the game, it, it wouldn't have given him the opportunity to prove himself. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike played well throughout. He had the one ball that got bounced around and got mm -hmm. picked off in the end zone, and that really wasn't his fault. And then we had a fumble down on the goal line. We should have had three scores right away. And uh, you know, those were just little mistakes and, and things that, that just something went wrong. And Mike got back out there and stuck us in the end zone in the third quarter. Do you expect that Tom Zach will start next week? Oh, yes, definitely. Mike, Mike will start next week, and I'm looking to get some playing time as well and uh, probably the same type of situation as today. Mike will start the game. I'll probably get some playing time and get a chance to, mm -hmm. to just work with it a little bit. But you're not conceding the starting job for the playoffs yet, are you? Well, I'm going to try to you know, do the best I can and, and make my bid for it. But uh -huh. like I said, I just want to get myself in a position to help the team. Okay, congratulations. You did a great job. Thanks a lot. Okay, Doug Flutie of the Chicago Bears, former Heisman Trophy winner. Now three have played for the Chicago Bears. You know who the other two are? Johnny Lujak and John Hewitt, the other Heisman Trophy winners who played for the Chicago Bears. Howard, I'll bet you didn't know that. Sure I did. You did? What okay. Are you talking about, That's it from the locker room. Jim McMahon out for the season, shoulder surgery. Tom Zach will open, but we are also going to see a lot of this young man, Doug Flutie, we are told by head coach Mike Ditka. He played last week against Tampa Bay. He looked really well. He threw the ball well, and he ran the ball well. But more than that, he seemed to take charge of this team, and we know all about Flutie's collegiate credentials. He is perhaps the quarterback that will take the Bears into the playoffs, and Mike Ditka would like to do that. And who would have believed this eight or nine weeks ago when Flutie was somewhat unemployed, in quotes, and property of the L.A. Rams. And almost sparked a rebellion when they signed him. And, of course, Jim McMahon said we didn't need him in the first place. Ditka said he didn't care what McMahon said about it. Flutie, complete to Dennis Gentry, and Gentry gets rolled out of bounds at the 37-yard line by Demetrius Johnson, number 21. Of course, Flutie was the celebrated signee of the Generals, played there in the 1985 season, nine games, broken collarbone, never really had an opportunity to show the great talent that we all witnessed when he was at Boston College. He's a very cerebral young man. He puts a lot of work into a football game. He'll come in on an off day. As you can see, he has the same birthday as Mike Tomczak. That's unusual, but he puts that extra effort into it, and he is very bright. Sanders in the game. They split him to the right. Flutie throws it over the middle, complete to Sanders, and Sanders into Lions territory to the 43 and a first down. That is the other dimension that Flutie will give you that Tom Zach does not. Tom Zach probably would have been nailed there. Flutie was able to get away from it. He had the strength in the arm to get the ball downfield, and he got it down there for the completion. And to the air, and he sidearms one for a first down to the 24-yard line. Flutie hitting Dennis Gentry, and that's another Chicago first down as Flutie has let them down inside the Lions' 25-yard line. He's dry, he's quick, he read that absolutely perfectly and knew he was going to have the man open. And the other thing that happened a short while ago when the Detroit Lions came with their blitz, they tried that the first two times he was in a passing situation. Flutie got away from it both times, and they are literally going to drive Detroit out of that. And Doug Flutie, if you joined us late, did not start the game. Mike Tomczak, though, was injured. Fake to Payton. Flutie steps up and over the middle and has it picked off at the four-yard line by Galloway. And Galloway loses the ball at the 28, a scramble at the 30. And on the pileup, Detroit still has it. Don't do anything that's going to hurt you. Don't hurt your quarterback, Doug Flutie. Don't let him throw an interception 
perhaps get himself down a little bit because he looks like he's going to be the man to take the Bears into the playoffs. Second and eight from the 22-yard line as Flutie throws complete the goal and a first down at the 37-yard line. Stopped by McNorton and Johnson and a gain of 15. Not since Dustin Hoffman chased down Mrs. Robinson and her daughter has one man created so much commotion for completing two passes in the same afternoon. <laughs> the lead of the year. The one there that was floating in the pool. <laughs> Not Shoemaker either who won a big race in Hollywood Park yesterday. From the 37, Flutie throws and it's complete to call. And he first down out at the 48-yard line. If you don't cover it, I'm going to come back and give it to you again. And they continue to work against McNorton. They get him in single coverage. Flutie can read it. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. Payton to the Lion 46-yard line. Gain of about six. Third and inches, and it's Flutie who gets the inches and a couple of yards more to the 40-yard line, first down Chicago. Another headline for Flutie. We'll read about it. <laughs> yeah. the 40 and turns it into a gain to the 35 but he is six yards shy of the first down tackle by Maxwell and you're looking at about a 52 yard field goal attempt fine job thus far by Doug Flutie I think Ditka had to get him in there earlier than he wanted to 7 11 65 yards on third and nine with Gentry in motion and everybody in the pattern and a four-man rush and it's caught at the 41 by oh. Gentry who pays the price but gets the first down survives the hit by William Graham. Flutie put it up there where wide receivers hate to have it delivered. You put it up high and you know when you go up you're going to get it. And just excellent concentration by the former running back Dennis Gentry as Graham really unloaded on him. Superb football tonight. From the 39 ball to the 32 Dwayne Galloway making the stop. Flutie with the ball near midfield able to go over between plays and get the first hand scoop from Ditka. Calvin Thomas in the game alongside Peyton. From the 40. Flutie throws a high pass but pulled in by Willie Gall. Neil Anderson is in the game. That's him in motion from the 15 yard line. As Flutie throws and nearly has that one picked off by James Harrell. He's got Steve Fuller up there. <laughs> He's got more head by the by the jersey. <laughs> Get in there and tell him what I want done. When Flutie leaves after this series, he may go to the Detroit bench. More head in motion to get away from Ditka, I suppose. And Flutie rolling, and that one is nearly intercepted. Uh -huh. I don't know if that neck is capable of showing veins, but it's getting close. Suey in motion. Play action for Moorhead. Makes the catch at midfield. Oh. And then the ground created the fumble at the 49-yard line. Chicago ball covered by Galloway and Johnson, but Moorhead got there, and the pass was right there. Bloody had a little floater on this. At least he had time to get it off. Got it in there to Moorhead. In the zone. Good Ooh. pass by Flutie. So he's averaging 4.3 tonight. From the 38-yard line, it's Willie Gould. Who gets run out of bounds at the 29-yard line. And that's a gain of about nine. In the booth, Al Michaels and Frank Gifford saying good night from Pontiac, Michigan. Final score, 16-13 Bears. Flutie with his first NFL start. Flutie out of the shotgun. Flag down. Cowboys offside. Dennis Gentry gets the first down for the Bears down to the Cowboy 27-yard line. Michael Downs knocked him out of bounds. A gain of 10. Yeah, I tell you, uh, he is an impressive guy, though. You know, we, I mean, he has something Mike Ditka talks about. He, so you don't know what it is. I mean, that winning attitude, the charisma, the... The leadership, it, you know, I mean, it's hard to really put a definition on it, but this guy has it. Right, Lynn went in motion.
Houston. Flutie. Fire. Reitman is the man. At about the one. Down. Finally took him out of bounds, but it'll be first and goal Bears at the Cowboy one. Now watch. We see the motion come across. Now, right here, he's not open. Now he steps up a couple more things, and here's Reitman down here in the bottom, wide open, and that got the ball down to the one-yard line. Now, Flutie had to buy a little time on this. You see Reitman is coming down, going out. Flutie's scrambling now. Reitman keeps working to the outside. That much just finds an opening in there, and Flutie, in scrambling, bought the time that he could get it to Reitman. Gentry. That's Anderson moving. Backpedaling. For Anderson, touchdown. <laughs> Flutie got it there. If you don't believe he's got a good arm, check this one out again. Those are two guys that are going to loom bank in this bear offense. Starts in motion. Now he's just going to run straight up the field, right past Bill Bates. He has great speed, much faster than Bates, as you can see, and Flutie hit it right out there in front of him. Here comes Anderson. There comes Bates. There goes Anderson. There stays Bates. There's the football. Whoa! Flutie threw that ball from his own 34. Anderson caught it at the 10. So the strength of his arm should no longer be in question. Strength is not one of his weaknesses. Flutie headed back to the sideline, and look at Mike Ditka. That's the other side of Ditka. A little hug. And the head turned away. Flutie hit Neil Anderson with a 58-yard touchdown pass. That's the way it is. Flutie back to throw again. Going for golf. Intercepted by Fellows. You know, it's interesting, Pat, that last week, Doug Flutie was saying he had trouble with the signal. So after a while, he asked him, please send the plays in. Now, today I noticed that after a play, he's walking over to the bench and getting the play firsthand. Flutie gets it out to Anderson. He skipped away from one cowboy. And Neil Anderson hurdles into cowboy territory, tripped up by Mike Hegman. You know, one thing you always talk about, Doug Flutie's size, mostly about his height, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a strong arm. Doug Flutie does have a strong arm. Doug Flutie at quarterback for the Bears with Walter Payton and Matt Suey behind him. Flutie with time. The middle. Forehead. Fellows and Hegman. Wrapped around Emory Moorhead. 14-yard gain, bear first down. Watch him how you throw between lanes. You see it there? You don't throw over anyone. You just find an open lane, and that's where you throw. That's the ball at their own 28. Rudy again retreats the bat. Trying to throw a screen pass to Peyton. Flutie off on the move, and he's quick. Doug Flutie down at the 47-yard line. First down, Bears, a 19-yard scramble and a timeout signaled for by Doug Flutie. So he's out of the lineup right now. Place taken by Bortz, I believe. Peyton batted it in the air. Becker, I beg your pardon, took his place. Flutie's got to hurry. The 30 seconds clock down to four seconds now. They'll get the play off. Flutie out of the pocket again. In zone open is golf touchdown. That's what a Flutie can do for you. Well, that's a good combination. A quarterback who can buy a time and the speed of Willie Golf. This is what Flutie can do. By the time he stops back, he looks, he feels the pressure, although he really had pretty good protection. Now he's able to come out to the left side. He not only bought a little time, but he gets out here in that open where he has great vision. He can see the whole field, but see the thing that that, that Flutie could do by not staying in the pocket, by getting outside, that gave him a full vision. Quarterback situation with the Bears. Who knows? Well, I think it's overrated. You know, I you really do. do. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, 
it'll probably be Doug Flutie, but I think that's going to be the thing they talk about all next week. I don't think Fuller is in the competition now. I think right now it's between this guy, Doug Flutie, and Mike Thompson. Of course, I'll tell you, Doug Flutie, there's nothing wrong with his arm. Maybe his height, but not his <laughs> arm. Yeah, you know, you, you look at him, you know, Sonny Jurgensen and Fran Tarkin and Greasy were all relatively short quarterbacks. They would stand in the pocket and throw through the seams. Flutie is effective when he rolls out of the pocket, gets to the outside where he's open. So the key to stopping him is to keep him in the cup, right, so he can't see. The legend of Little Big Man continues. The second career start for Doug Flutie. And Paul, close to first down yardage at the 24, is tackled by Daryl Green. What the Bears do here is they start golf out of the backfield. That's to make it more difficult for Daryl Green to catch up to him. Green's late getting there, but he makes a fine open field tackle. And that first pass of Flutie's was right on the hands of Willie Golf. Second and five at the 30. Dave Butts chased him, and Tim Reitman, the tight end, makes the catch for a Bears first down. At the 37, Olkowitz on the tackle. In Doug Flutie's brief NFL career, every time he's made something happen, it's after he's been flushed out of the pocket. He's such a fine athlete, this time running to his right, right back into the middle to Reitman. But he has never really come up with a big, big play, just standing still in the pocket. Pressure on, but the pass is caught by Reitman again. And he picked up close to nine yards that time. From behind, Doug Flutie drifting a bit to his right, but immediately, look how Reitman is open, and the umpire has to duck to get out of the way of the football. Funny how receiver and quarterback look at each other like the fellow in the striped shirt isn't even there. Neil Anderson in motion, the rookie from Florida. First and 10 at the 49. They're going for goal. And he'll be off. Touchdown, Bears. Watch Doug Flutie dropping back. Watch him pump and fake a pass. He's going to plant. And right there, that's what draws Daryl Green up on Willie Galt. Now let's go to Daryl Green and Willie Galt. Now Daryl Green giving Galt the inside, gets fooled badly, and even when he tries to grab Galt, he can't make the play. Curtis Jordan, too late to get there. Speed. It's good for a touchdown. Well, we expected the ground game to dominate, but so far, Galt and Monk have caught touchdown passes in a 7-7 game. Anderson in motion, and Manley came from behind before the ball was snapped. You cannot take a free shot on the quarterback like that, Dexter. So a pair of mistakes by the Redskins, but this certainly the largest of the two. And I think the other was on Dexter as well. And that is, that's just not smart football. The Bears lead 10-7. Completes the pass to Keith Ortigo, who had only caught two passes in the last six games, and he's knocked out of bounds by Daryl Green. From the sidelines, Doug Flutie behind good protection. Covert is taking Manley way out of the way, opens up a passing lane, and Ortigo, rather than just run out of bounds, wisely turns up field, picks up a couple more yards than he would have gotten if he would have allowed his momentum to just carry him out of bounds. Boy, you really come out of it with a feeling that this guy is quite an athlete. Kind of reminiscent of the way Steve Young in Tampa runs with the football. Flutie completes the ball. Stopped at the 48, but a big gain of 17 yards and a first down, and they quickly line up. On first down at the 48, Flutie fires, tipped, and intercepted by Vernon Dean to the 43-yard line, 21 seconds to go. There's something about Doug Flutie. When he drops back, things seem to happen. Uh, there's no, uh, I guess it's no secret why Mike Dick has him starting, Dick. I mean, things just revolve around him. He's the center of attention all the time. 
Third and four with five down linemen. Willie Gall makes the play, and Darrell Green brings him down. If you want to really know how much Mike Ditka likes this guy, Doug Flutie, he spent Thanksgiving over at the coach's house. Coach says, could you imagine three months ago he was on the street, now he's two games from a Super Bowl. Flutie to put it up. Loads of time. And it's intercepted by Darrell Green, and Green is up and running. Green to the 25, and finally stopped at the 26-yard line. So Flutie's second interception of the day gives the Redskins a great chance here to move closer. And there is Jim McMahon and what he must be thinking, because he was never in favor of Doug Flutie being there. Not that Flutie is the reason why the Bears are trailing. No, Jim McMahon went public and made some comments about he just didn't feel that Doug Flutie had been a member of the Bears long enough or had enough experience to be taking this team into the playoffs. And it was a comment that was not received very well by Mike Ditka. And a lot of people might speculate that jealousy could be behind it all. How fickle are the winds of football? Pre-game introductions, Doug Flutie next to Walter Payton. The loudest ovation of the crowd here at Soldier Field. And now, every time a pass takes off on him, he's being booed rather lustily, wouldn't you say? He's got to try to go deep or get something deep in a hurry. He completes that to Willie Gall at midfield. And a gain of seven on the play. Flutie stepping up, fires for Ortigo, and Ortigo completes it, has it inside the 25, where Tim Morrison makes the catch, a gain of 26. Second and 10 with that much time remaining at the 23. Flutie looking to pitch out, does so, and Matsui is knocked out of bounds to stop the clock at the seven with 59 seconds to go. Fourth and goal at the five. Flutie will try to run it, flips it, and it's knocked away by Vernon Dean on the pass intended for Keith Ortigo, and that will do it. And now what's been a tumultuous season for Chicago switches over to what will probably be as tumultuous an offseason because somehow you get the impression that Mike Ditka is not just going to sit back and say, well, fellas, we're going to do next year what we did this year. I don't think that is any longer acceptable. I have no regrets about it. If that was switched over today, I would bring him again today. It was very disappointing because I think that was my best opportunity in my career. That was my best opportunity to get to a Super Bowl. The following October, the Bears traded Flutie to New England.